well, I got a new cowboy hat my wife brought home for me. And so as a result of wearing this new cowboy hat, I've learned that, that these are no longer hand pockets in the jeans, but they're thumb pockets. So I have to do it right, right? Hey, I gotta tell you, we got a good show here at 1835 Paseo San Luis, the Huachu Guard Association's gallery. And I happen to be leaned up against a blank spot on the wall with some lonely hooks up here where art used to be. And it used to be there because somebody saw it, they liked it, and they bought it. Like everything else that's hanging on the walls here, it was for sale. And now it's adorning someone else's living room. And so you need to know that so that you can understand that a trip out here is not a wasted trip. It is one where you might actually be able to find that thing that you can't live without. Now, I don't want to confuse you, but I like to take the opportunity at the beginning of these episodes to talk about things that sometimes you might say, well, what does that have to do with art? And I'm about to do that right now, but it'll all come together in just a minute. I'm a 28-year Army veteran, very successful career, retired as a field artillery sergeant major, but I can't take credit for all of that success. I had a wife who is just absolutely remarkable in ensuring that my success in the Army was going to happen. See, that's something that we don't talk a lot about. Military spouses, they are the Army's secret army. They provide success, imbue success into their husbands and their wives simply by sacrificing whatever lives they may have had in store for themselves and supporting that career, which is a commitment. It's a life commitment. It's a scary thing to do, but guess what? The spirit grown as a result of having served at the side of a military member is incredible. These are amazing people. For those of you who have ever met my wife, Siggy Yatarian, you would know right off the bat, my God, what a fantastic person. And you'd be right. But that's what I've got to be right next to throughout an entire Army career. And our two featured artists, well, guess what? They too have served next to a soldier. As a matter of fact, the first one we're going to talk to, Holly Freeze, She's currently married to Sergeant Major Freeze. He is an Army National Guard Sergeant Major stationed at Fort Huachuca. And you got to understand that this is something that takes a lot of commitment, a lot of sacrifice, and still they find it within themselves to broadcast their passions in art. So let's go over here and let's meet Holly first and then I'll introduce you to Clara Pimple, another artist who also has served next to a soldier in her life. So come on, let's meet Holly Freeze. Hello. Good to see you, Holly. Nice to see you. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Well, I'm originally from Bismarck, North Dakota. Um, and then we moved to Utah for a little while, Camp Williams, and then we moved to D.C., and then here. And then here. Yes. So D.C., <laughs> as a matter of fact, in D.C., I mean, you've been doing art for a long time. Yeah. And you actually had your work in a gallery in D.C., didn't you? Mm -hmm. So yes. tell us a little a bit. Yeah. How, how'd that all, all produce itself? Well, I had stopped doing art for some time um, because, you know, life. Uh, I was a nurse, I was a mom, all that stuff kind of took precedence, mm -hmm. and I stopped doing it um, just more of a hobby inside my house. And so when we moved to D.C., uh, I didn't have anything going as a career yet, so I had gone out with a girlfriend, and we went to this restaurant gallery. She's like, you should check this out. It's so much fun. There's live artists. I'm like, what is that all about? I've never heard of a live art restaurant gallery. Yeah. So we went, met her friend. I'm like, this is so much fun. Mm -hmm. I would love to be able to join, paint, display art. And so that really picked up my whole art career from then on. It was about, I don't know, five, seven years ago. 
Wow, no. wow. And so, in our nation's capital, you are you are producing art in front yeah. of people. And, yes, it was and, so much fun. And so, so people would be looking over your shoulder Absolutely. while you're doing a piece. Mm -hmm. and, Come up and ask questions. And isn't that a little intimidating? I mean... Um, well, you kind of have to be, I guess, um, a person that isn't afraid to do your craft in front of people, mm -hmm. knowing that someone might pop up mm -hmm. behind you or want to talk, especially like the kids. Mm -hmm. The little kids would be the most interested and you'd have the most fun interacting with them and talking about what they're doing in mm -hmm. art and how their craft is coming along. And um, you just kind of have to be someone that wants to interact and display and work at the same time. It's kind of a, a a ball. Have you ever been there doing a piece while people were looking over your shoulder and then gone, oops, I didn't mean to do that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I have this weird habit of painting and then all of a sudden like the brush will go bing just out of my hand for no reason and it'll like drop on the paint and I'm like, oh no. So I had a, a child come up to me one time mm -hmm. and they were very upset about a painting that didn't go their way mm -hmm. and I had expressed to this child that I had that similar exper experience where I actually dropped the brush it fell on the painting and instead of being upset about it I created something else from that spot so it ended up being a tree and a little tree that came together and I, I think I called it like mother and child or something so something else developed from the mistake. So serendipitously, uh, the mistake wound up being a quality mis uh, 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 yeah. addition to exactly. your art. Exactly. Uh, something that sprung out of a mistake. You know, we talk we pretty. talk about that with this I incident, but you know, I mean, that happens to me all the time where I'm I'm thinking, okay. Uh, I'm doing something, then I mess it up, but that mess up winds up being better than what it was that I thought I was going to be doing. So our mistakes very often are exactly uh, what produce our strengths mm -hmm. in the end. And exactly. so it's, it's an amazing thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. great story. But this is your stuff. Look mm -hmm. at this. I mean, you really have a keen eye. Uh, what types of themes do you prefer in your acrylic painting? Like my subjects? Yeah. Oh gosh, I guess it depends on my mood that I'm in. Sometimes I want to just be free and paint a, mm -hmm. a tree that goes any which way. Or, like, like that or that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what kind Very of a free. mood does that take? I'm curious. Well, um, these are not so much of my creepy weird tree. So more <laughs> over here is kind of a, a creepy weird tree where I was feeling like I wanted to be in a kind of a spooky mood, you know, for okay. Halloween. But the other trees are something that was more pretty and delicate. So yeah. sometimes I just like to be in a different mood and create something that is I'm drawn to in the moment. I've also noticed right below it, Day of the, uh, Day of the Dead mm -hmm. uh, uh, themes here. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about those. What inspires those? Well, I think what inspires them most with me is that it is a reflection of love for someone that has passed mm -hmm. and typically day of the dead traditionally is a whimsical take on something that is spiritually um and emotionally mm -hmm. a reflection of like your loved one that's passed so it's it's like a celebration a celebration of your loved one that has passed I see so different colors different um, lines kind of mean things and just having whimsy behind not spooky or scary it's all about celebration and you, you place a lot of importance in that idea that concept so mm -hmm. much so that on the back of each one of these you have the history of the day of the dead celebration yes, yes a little so. history um, that uh, you know, it was originally Aztec, mm -hmm. um, and it combined with Catholicism, and the different colors mean different things. Um, they're actually it's actually celebrated on two separate days. A lot of people don't know that mm -hmm. um, November first and November second, representing children and then adults that have passed. 
So it's it's really meaningful behind the so, fun. So besides getting a remarkable uh, piece of art with Day of the Dead theme, you also get an understanding of what that day actually means to the people who celebrate it. And, and uh, it's on the back as a reminder. So a little bit of an education is you're buying into as well if you didn't already know this. What else do we have here? See, you've got so many whimsical things and I love these caricatures. Like, like see, there's a dog up there, that's a painting, but you also have a print of it right here. What, what, what on God's green earth made you decide to put these round glasses on this puppy? I just love anything that is a little bit quirky, a little fun. Yeah. Something that's going to, someone's going to look at it and smile and say, oh my gosh, that's so much fun. Tap someone next to them and say, look at this. There is not, it's so cute. There is not an animal on here that doesn't have a character, a personality, yes. a, an expression. Yeah. You know, I mean, look at that donkey. I, I love <laughs> that donkey. You know, he's just my best friend right now. He's super cute. But, but I wanted to show something that I saw before you came in this morning. And these are reproductions of, you, sometimes you'll use photographs. Yes. And you will do your painting. So you have the photograph that you used, and mm -hmm. then next to it you have the painting, the acrylic painting that you did. Mm -hmm. So, and for a larger view, I mean, take a look at this. This is just amazing. That's a photograph, and that is your painting. I gotta tell you, your painting is so realistic looking. At first, I thought the painting was the photograph. Oh, thank you. But uh, now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking the painting is better than the photograph. <laughs> You know, and this is just incredible, the amount of detail that you have in mm -hmm. order to get the fur and everything. How much time does it take to be able to get all of these finer details lined out? Well, these are all examples of commissions that mm -hmm. I've done. And so typically what I tell my clients is that I like to give a one-month time period just so that I can come back and forth to the painting because they are very detailed and so mm -hmm. I need to take a break and step away sometimes. But uh, one month approximately, smaller mm -hmm. paintings, a shorter amount of time, mm -hmm. larger, obviously a, a longer amount of time, but um, I give myself about a one month space. Well, now you've been with the gallery for, well, it's been going on two years. Going on two yeah, years, so yeah, a year and a half, half about. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, and your your husband, Sergeant Major Freeze, mm -hmm. is an uh, Army uh, guard, mm -hmm. and he's stationed on Fort Huachuca. Yes. And unfortunately, with the military, you don't always get to stay in one place for a whole lot of time. Mm -hmm. So, what's going to happen next? How long do you think you'll be here? Well, the, the kids and I are staying. Okay. Um, and we've bought a house. The plan is to retire here. And um, he is set to retire fairly soon. It's up in the air a little bit right now of where he might spend his last two to three years in the service before retiring and then coming back here and that's where we stay. So you've, cho you've chosen <laughs> Sierra Vista as your home. Mm -hmm. So it's made an impact on you. Yes, this was the goal. That was my husband's goal. He fell in love with Vale and Sierra Vista many, many years ago. And he's yeah. like, i got to get you there. You're going to love it. Well, I mean, <laughs> how, how can you beat these blue skies? Personally, I hate blue skies. They're boring. You know, I need <laughs> storms. But yeah. as a photographer, I want storms. <laughs> I want clouds. Yeah. But we get plenty of those as well. Monsoon so I get my, my fair share. I, I get to eat a lot, in mm -hmm. other words. Um, but... So you're going to be here forever now, at least. Uh, That's the plan. Long term. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's so good to have you as a member well, of our community, you. and I this talent is just incredible. Oh, thank I got to tell so you, much. absolutely love your work. I love the personality behind it. But I got to tell you, if you ever want to know what it's like to live in Sierra Vista for darn near all of your life after having served. Mm. You need to talk with Clara oh, over yes. here, whom we're going to talk to now, <laughs> because Clara, how long have you lived here? 51 years. This time. 
this time. And you were here before. I was here in 1969 for all of six months. Fell in love. And then, and went then. Went to Germany, came back, and been here. Can you imagine that? I mean, it's like 1972, 73? 73. 1973. You get orders to go to Fort Huachuca. First of all, it's a place that you fell in love with. But then everybody's saying, oh, man, Fort Huachuca. They've got a drive through McDonald's there. <laughs> So Not when we first came, <laughs> no, but you got to see the dr first drive-through McDonald's in Sierra yes. Vista. So how how amazing is that? You've been here a long, long time. A long time. And so you served as well as a military My spouse. My husband was uh, sergeant major for the dir directorate of logistics on okay. Fort Huachuca. Okay, so so you you know exactly what I was talking about in my opening remarks: the sacrifices oh, yes. that are made and and the support given, and that's how that's how you help build as a team a successful career, and you got to participate in that. You know, there's so much admiration for the military spouses, and I don't, I mean, just because these happen to be army wives does not mean that army wives are exclusive to being spouses. There are a lot of army husbands who also support their, their wives who are soldiers, and I don't want to forget about them because they're doing as exceptional of a job as uh, these ladies have, because that's past tense for you. For me, I retired from Fort Huachuca also. As I, a GS, right? Yes. So, so you served as well as a government employee. Yes. So, wow, a remarkable career. When did you decide that, hey, I want to be an artist and I want to go to the Huachuca <laughs> Art Association and display my work? Well, I think that was more recently, maybe a couple of years ago, that mm -hmm. uh, that I got in here. I had uh, run on to a couple of ladies at Art in the Park, and mm -hmm. they convinced me that I should come over and check it out, and I did, and joined, and it's been fun ever since. Yep, yep. Well, you know, Teresa Ebbs, who we're going to talk to you about upcoming events, also uh, was a military spouse. And we were talking a little bit about it uh, this morning. And uh, apparently all roads lead to the Huachuca Art Association. Keep that in <laughs> mind. Because you started in uh, where? Ohio? I was born in Ohio. You were a farm girl, weren't a you? farm girl, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Corn and wheat? Uh, no, my husband was on a dry, line wheat, uh, dry land wheat farm in okay. Colorado, but we grew some wheat out there, but we had lots of rain. So, you were, was... so you were a working girl, and the next thing you know, you're an <laughs> Army spouse, and the next thing you know, you're a GS employee, and now you're an artist. Yes. So let's talk about your art. What do you oh. say? Let's come over here and take a look at some of the things that you've done, because these baskets, very colorful uh, uh uh, array of baskets here. I, I tell us a little bit about what it takes to put one of those things together. Well, they're really pretty easy. I've taught lots of people to make them. I like to teach also. Mm -hmm. And uh, you wrap fabric around clothesline type rope. Mm -hmm. um, and certain kinds of rope are better than others. And then some of them are plain, some of them have much smaller rope. Mm -hmm. And that those were just something I picked up and tried. Everything I looked at was kind of like this here. Mm -hmm. And and so I decided to just on my own try all these other little things and made all the ring baskets. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I just went from there. I got into these Zen rocks because I saw them on Facebook and thought, oh, that would be interesting. So I went out and tried to find things about them and didn't find much, but... <laughs> and why are they called Zen rocks? Well, that's what they were called. That's so what they I were called. I think it's, you get in that... Uh, that phase of just wrapping and and it just is so wonderful that you're just sitting there and doing this repetition and I you know I'm it's looking fun. I'm looking at the wrappings like this one that has has the the uh, very Stick large toothpick <laughs> going through it but I, I'm looking at this thing and and I'm I chuckled when we did our pre-interview and you said oh this is easy to do. 
because oh, so that does not look easy to me at all. <laughs> I mean, God, well, my fingers would cramp up. I'd it's, be in it pain. It just kind of puts you in the zone and you relax so and, very therapeutic. and have fun doing it. So. so the Zen rocks are as much of a Zen experience for the artist as they are for, for the person, for the person who is going to receive them. Okay. Yes. But these aren't the only things that you do. No, I do the totems also. The totems. How do you put one of these things together? <laughs> well, you start with a lot of fabric. You lay out your fabric and you mm. pull this one and this one and say, I think these would look good together and this would look good together. And then you sew them together and then you decorate the heck out of them with either beading like this or mm -hmm. like this is a paper bead that I made. Mm -hmm. um, this is an earring that somebody gave me. So, so I just choose from all the stuff I have. I have boxes and boxes and boxes of doodads and beads and stuff. And so you create order out of chaos. And you know, <laughs> I, 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 I had an epiphany when I was when I was looking at this this morning, trying to think of other questions I could ask you about. And that epiphany was I started reading the titles of each one of the pieces. Now, I don't title my photographs. I want people to come up with their own title. But I realized when I read the title on there, it actually gave me insight into what you were thinking as you provided this order. And I could actually see that, for instance, this one, oh uh, no, where is it? I gotta find it. Navajo Dreams. I looked at that and I thought, okay, I understand this totem now. I had clarity of what this totem is intended to represent. represent. Exactly. Well, and you brilliantly pulled together different pieces of fabric the colors are perfect for that type of thing. And now when I look at it, I'm not just looking at a totem with different pretty colors and, and uh, stuff. I'm, I feel the intent of the artist. So the title in your case is as important as the piece itself for people to understand. I, I think I take as long trying to think of the right name for the piece as I do in making it. Sometimes I just sit there and look and go, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, you, well, know, you know, but, what? but like this one, the the one with the ladies up there was the first piece of fabric I pulled out. Uh huh. And then I just looked at things that I thought went with that. I so see. So I usually start with a basic piece. Uh huh. Not always, but usually. And then try to pull things in that will look good with them. With this set, I had these fabrics and I wanted to use them and make a set that would look So we're looking different. at Bisbee 1, Bisbee Copper 1, Bisbee Copper 2, and Bisbee Copper 3. Right. And this is a depiction of that, that theme. The one that made my head spin a little bit after, after I read the title was the blue piece right above it because I'm looking and I said, oh, that's pretty. Then I read Sea of Change. And then I looked at it again and I'm like, Hypnotized. Oh, we see a change. Oh, what does this mean? This is deep. Oh, really deep? Well, How deep know. is this sea? Oh, this is so cool. All of a sudden, my head's spinning. So, the titles for your totems are, are significant, I think, is the point. Yeah. And you put a lot of thought into them. I, I so, just, I truly enjoy this. I, a friend of mine who came to teach here taught this as a class. And then when she quit teaching, she gave me permission to teach. So I teach this in Green Valley and Tucson and other places. So not only is this a new new thing for you, but you're already teaching others how to do it. Oh, yeah. So, that's, that's more fun than anything is the teaching. So absolutely. I taught I, my, my young niece to quilt. Mm -hmm. She came down for five years and she won grand champion three of those five years in um, the her county fair up in Colorado. Wilting as well. Oh my goodness. My goodness. So now that's you, where I started before I got so, to this. So <laughs> multimedia art is your genre of art. What about any other type of art? You ever try painting or drawing sketching? 
Mm, yeah. Oh, you got something. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just finished this. Oh. Well, look at that. And you, and that was your creation. Um, I bought the shirt with the design stitched out on it from a friend. Okay. And then okay. I used, I wanted to use the ink tense pencils because I've really gotten into using those a lot and love them. Yeah. And I've done a lot of this painting on fabrics with different things stitched out. But the denim does not take the ink tense very well. So then I had to try all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> so I used unicorn spit as one of the paints. Um, you, I'm sorry. Unicorn spit. Unicorn spit. It's That's a, a thing. It's a paint. It's a paint. <laughs> it is. Oh, God, I'm so <laughs> ignorant. <laughs> okay. And there's a lot of other different craft paints okay. that go on to this. And okay. then you have to... Well, Put well, a medium over it well, see, and folks, iron it. If you don't have space on your wall to hang a picture, you can always wear a picture. <laughs> so There you go. So, uh, Clara, thank you so much for the oh, time you've welcome. given us. It's, it's wonderful that you're part of the gallery. It's wonderful that you, at this stage of your life, have decided that this is what you want to do and you're sharing it with so many people. So You're a never lot of too old to learn. A lot of admiration. <laughs> I've been saying that for the last 34 episodes, haven't I? You're never too old to learn. So come on down, because we have classes here, too. Are you ever going to give a class here? Um, it just depends. I probably would. I think you should. I've taken a couple. I think you should. <laughs> I think you should give some classes, especially on these beautiful works of well, art that you have on the for wall. this, they would need a sewing machine. Oh, that's, that's a little bit. not necessarily easy because a lot of these people do different types of art than yeah. I do, and they don't sew. Okay. So this would be a little more difficult, and these are sewn on the sewing machine, believe it or not. Even the thick ones, you can get that underneath your... Uh, foot and so well so again thank you very much you're welcome. very much appreciated and you know what I told you about uh, these are thumb pockets and not hand pockets but old habits die hard and so thumbs need to go back in here but we do have some good <laughs> habits like at the end of every one of our episodes one of our habits is to come on over here <laughs> and talk to Teresa Ebbs who who pets her paint and stuff. <laughs> hey, Teresa. Hi. What's going on? Well, we have Art in the Park mm -hmm. on October 5th. That's the first day for it to kick off. And that's on a Saturday. So just so you know, our gallery will be closed because everyone's going to be at Art in the Park. And uh, it will be going on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. 9 a.m. And on Sunday, it will go from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. And because of Art in the Park, we're not going to have our reception on that first Saturday. It will be on the second Saturday, which will be the 12th. The 12th. So the, feature, the two featured artists that you just saw me interview... They will be having their reception here from 3 to 5 on the 12th. It's a Saturday. So please, come on down. It's open to everybody. Don't forget about them. Don't forget about them. And on October 6th at Art in the Park, I brought this lovely bowl over because it will be the final day for our raffle drawing for this bowl. So if you're interested in this bowl, you can purchase tickets until here until Art in the Park time mm -hmm. and then it's going to be moving out to Art in the Park and it's a dollar a ticket or six for five and the bowl is valued at a hundred dollars and it, it's just a beautiful bowl very nice very nice but I wanted to remind y'all of that we don't have a whole lot going on this month because of Art in the Park that um on October 19th, we also have a beginning quilling class with our very own Sue Ziegler. And um, it's from, it will be from 1.30 to 3.30. And 
you need to have it all be registered for the class by October 15th. And the fee for that class is $15. And they just have a blast when they're doing their quilling. So it'd be something fun to, okay. to join in and do. Uh, also on October 26th, we have our annual student art show that's coming up. And we have all the info for this. It's down in the studio. And drop by if you've ever had a class or a workshop, done a workshop here, uh, and bring your artwork in that you did. Yeah. And join in on the fun. You'll be on that featured artist wall, and we'll have a reception for you. And it's a good time to show off your beautiful pieces that you created in one of our our uh, classes and then on Saturday the November 2nd we'll from 3 to 5 we'll have a reception for all the artists that participated in the workshops and demos so I wanted to invite everybody for that it will be fun it'll be a great opportunity to get to meet a lot of these people many of whom we've interviewed over the past year or so and uh, uh, shake their hand, uh, get a uh, bird's eye view of the type of stuff they've been doing. So, is, is that all? That's it. it. Well, is Nathaniel still going to be giving oh, his yeah, kids there, classes? We still have our normal kids classes. That's Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And then on Tuesdays, we have uh, Joanne Berry's art class. Shame on you for forgetting about that. <laughs> so, well, are you going to be in the park? No, I won't be. In you won't be in the park? Well, guess what? It's okay because I want to be there with Cool FM Live at the park on the first day, that Saturday, at 9 a.m. So if you're curious, if you want a reconnaissance of what kind of things are going to be there, I will be happy to take you on a little stroll around the park on that morning, and then you can say, hmm, I think I want to get in the car and go there. Folks, as always, you know I love doing this, otherwise I wouldn't do it every month. That is to get to know these amazing people who do amazing things, broadcast their passion so that you can get in your cars and you can come here and you can take a look at their beautiful work and buy it. <laughs> Please buy our work. No, I'm kidding. But at least come on by and, and take a look at this stuff because the talent that happens to be in this area is phenomenal. And you shouldn't miss it. If you haven't been here, you really need to get out here. Well, you know I'm going to be back again next month. Not because I have to, but because I love to. So we'll see you next time. This is Sean Utarian, a.k.a. the Arizona Yeti, signing off.